Hello everybody, welcome back to Automation. Cone Dodger here. We're going to work on through some more engine recreations. You may notice this episode was titled a little bit differently. It does not say, uh, let's beta test anymore. That does not mean that we're not still in the beta of the game. I'm simply, uh, as I mentioned a little while ago, I'm separating these two uh, little series that I'm doing here. I'm separating the engine recreations into their own separate series from the Let's Beta Test series, so uh, whenever you see Let's Beta Test pop up, you know that I'm exploring either a new update in the game, some new features, or just overall showing features of the game. Uh, if you see this Let's Play automation, that means that we're working in the engine recreation series. So, with that explained, let's move on to the sandbox. I'm going to go to the engine manager, and we're going to continue on with our Ford engines. Today we're going to go on and uh, get into something that I kind of discussed a little bit during the uh, Chevy small block motors, and that is that Ford in the 90s really stepped up their game on the technology front uh, as far as V8s go. They they strayed away from the the, the norm, the, the overhead valve, push rod V8, blah 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 blah, let's throw some more uh, displacement at it and make more power. Uh, so they started this modular V8 motor. So it's going to be a V8. And this first one we're going to do is the very first one they made. That's the 4.6 2 valve. Alright, the 4.6 2 valve is a iron block motor. And it is 90.2. Oh, that's right. First try there. By 90. So a very square motor. Um, that in itself, not particularly... Uh, surprising or not very uh, high-tech or anything like that uh, kind of on the small side that ends up being a 4.6 liter and these motors typically are called by their liters not their cubic inches uh, that is true up until the very current modular motor so uh, that is how we are going to refer to them uh, this motor, as I said, the very first one they made, very simple as far as the bottom end stuff goes. We're just looking at cast iron cast and hyper eutectic cast pistons. So nothing overly dramatic going on down there. Uh, we're going to give it just a minor bump in quality on the bottom end. Not a rather large one, even though we may have some issues with that. Uh, as far as the rev limit goes. Uh, the year, the the motor that I'm replicating here is out of a 1998 Ford Mustang GT. Uh, that is two years into the production cycle of the modular V8, and I figure that's a good place to to go because it's it's the best version of the very first modular V8 they made. Um, so let's move on to the top end which is where it gets a little bit more interesting because we have an overhead cam set up. I say a little bit more interesting because it is just a very, very little bit. Uh, it is overhead cam, so single overhead cam, but as you may have picked up by the name, only two valves per cylinder. So really not that much different than, say, the push rod setup. But if you look at this, friction very high, airflow low. Airflow stays low, but the friction goes down the average. If if you go with a overhead cam setup, there's much less uh, friction and engine drag created by the valve train. So, although not very high tech in the fact that it's only two valves per cylinder, it is still an improvement and a step in the right direction. Uh, compression ratio, we're going to go down to a 9.3. Cam profile, I'll leave it 40 for now. No VVT or VVL. Uh, style, let's see. It's so kind of kind of limited. Um, let's see, maybe this one fits it a little bit better, I think. I'm just gonna stick with black. These motors are notorious, as were, say, like the LS1 and then Chevy's V8s of this era. Uh, notoriously very hard to get to. One thing about these motors is the heads 
especially once you get to the newer dual cam ones, the heads look gigantic on the motor. Uh, so it makes, because it's that wide V, uh, 90 degree V, it's very big, it's huge motor, it takes up the whole engine bay. Uh, so you don't really even see the valve covers in this application, uh, naturally aspirated. I, I truly do hope we're going to see superchargers. Uh, I know we will eventually. I hope it's as soon as possible because uh, when it comes to modular V8s, when it comes to Ford, they do a lot of cool things, especially with, say, SVT, Roush, uh, the tuners. They, they do a lot of cool things with superchargers, not so much with turbochargers. So uh, we'll wait. Wait on that. It is an injected with a multi point. But it's a single intake multi-point. Um, let's see, this is not exactly correct looking. Um, obviously they just kind of took one single point design and, and, and went with that. There is other designs. Fords typically, uh, in this era, seem to go off to one side. So the intake would be, say, here. Um, but it does not make any difference at all for our purposes. Uh, we're going to do a standard intake, which covers up that anyway. And just going to go with regular unleaded. Fuel mix about a 13.2. It's pretty lean. Uh, timing, we're going to come down to 40 because of that regular unleaded. Uh, RPM limit is 6,500. And uh, that's that's a bit high. Um, that's that's the fuel cut on this motor. Y you don't typically rev them that high, though. They don't they don't make very much power up the top, and we'll probably see that happen. Okay, on the exhaust, we're gonna go with short cast headers. Out a uh, dual exhaust. They did typically have a dual exhaust, and it is typically a two and a quarter inch system. Uh, we'll three-way cat with a um trying to think I don't remember ever seeing them have two mufflers so we're just gonna go with a first reverse flow muffler and then none on the back uh, one thing I need to do is bring the year down to a 98 I think that's going to keep us pretty safe as far as reliability goes and let's see if we can make 225 horsepower at 4200 RPM and 290 foot-pounds at 3500 RPM. Pretty conservative numbers. Uh, we may end up going a little high with that. And I think that is probably due to some conservativeness on Ford's part as far as to what numbers it made. And that certainly seems to be the case. You can see, uh, we're, as we, I kind of feared, we are running into a bit of a, a bottom end issue. So I'm gonna come off of that limit a little bit, to like 6,300 maybe. Uh, top end, I'm gonna reduce the cam profile to a 30. And we'll try that again, see if we can get those a little closer. Something was a little weird there. No more bottom end issues, but uh, it got extremely flat on the top. And uh, I didn't make as much torque as expected, so I'm gonna, let's see, we got 84.9, 86.4. I'm gonna give it a little bit more timing because I want both numbers to come up. I want torque and power to come up. Let me just skip this real quick. 267 at 3400 and 227 at 5500 so that's rather late so let me come down on that cam profile even a little bit more quick test there 219 so i'm just losing power at this point i'm not not dramatically gaining any torque here um we can 
come up on this cam or the ignition timing a little bit more. And still not a huge improvement here. Uh, still 5200, so we got that down a little bit. But uh, it's not the 4200 I have, I have found. Uh, there may just not be much we can do with that, however. Let's see, uh, is there anything that could be adjusted? Not really. I have this on dual, yes. Short cast, yes. Um, give it a little bottom end increase. I'm not going to increase the top end since this is very new to them, these overhead cam V8s. Uh, so let's get that up to 225 at least. And I think we'll probably just be happy with that. And that, uh, 226. That sounds good. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Uh, like I said, I think they were just a little bit conservative on these motors. They didn't really push them too hard because uh, they were so new and uh, they because of that are very responsive to mods and uh, that 225, 215, 225 number increases quite a bit as, uh, as time goes on and with some bolt-on modifications. So we're gonna call this the Ford Modular V8 4.6 2V. Oops, 2V. That's quite a name, but that is exactly what it is called. Okay, so now we're gonna move on a little bit forward, two years. Uh, do I even need, not necessarily, I don't need to start over. I'm just gonna go to the bottom end, and we're gonna keep the board the same at a 90.2, and we're gonna stroke it out to a 105.8. So very long stroke motor, that gives you a 329.9 cubic inch, or as I mentioned, a 5.4 liter 4 valve modular V8, which is found in the 2000 Ford Mustang SVT Cobra R. Uh, so this is the first high performance motor in the modular motor series. Uh, later on this motor becomes supercharged, becomes a little bit even more high tech. Uh, but this is, this is the first one that really impressed people. And uh, for good reason. We have a cast, or sorry, we have an aluminum block uh, with the same bore but a much bigger stroke. We have forged I-beam conrods. I uh, couldn't find exactly if they were forged pistons or not. Um, leaning probably towards not but I am not entirely sure, so if we'd run into reliability issues, that's something we could tweak around with. And then we go to the top panel, we're going to go with a dual overhead cam setup with four valves per cylinder. So we skip right from going with a overhead cam setup with just two valves, uh, skip over the three valve setup, which they did make, but it was primarily a truck motor, uh, to a dual overhead cam setup with four valves per cylinder. So pretty awesomely low friction, high RPM, high airflow, very good setup. Basically, still to this day, the best setup you can have on a V8. Uh, there is some five, five valves per cylinder setups out there, but not, not anything that is uh, obtainable, if, if, you, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, we're gonna go with the compression ratio up to a 9.6 and not a huge increase there. I'm gonna go on the cam profile back to like a 35. On uh, this particular motor, no VVT or VVL. That is something they are getting into now though. Uh, style wise, as you can see, we're already kind of pre built because I'm just modifying the last one. And I'm thinking there's a lot of options for these dual cam heads. Um, <laughs> none of them. Really speaking to me, I guess that one would work. Uh, aspiration, again, normal, actually aspirated. Very similar intake setup. Um, regular unleaded still. Um, actually, I believe these motors go up to a premium unleaded. Uh, so we'll call it super. For here, that's, that's what seems to be the norm for our premium is a 93.1. Uh, the fuel mix looks good. We'll keep this 
at 50 to start with, ignition timing. We're going to go up to a 6600 RPM rev limit. Again, that could cause some issues, but we will see. Exhaust, we're going to go up to a 2.5 inch exhaust. It's plenty of pipe for this car. Plenty of pipe, so that won't be limiting us. Uh, and now let's go for the important bit. Let's see if we can make 385 horsepower at 6200 RPM and 385 foot-pounds of torque at 4200 RPM. Something looks a little weird about that chart. <laughs> a, it doesn't go high enough. The way that torque curve looks, looks like something might be a stray. Too terribly far off on numbers though, 346 and 325. Uh, bottom end issues as I kind of anticipated. But we can, let's see, 86.1. We can go much higher on the timing. We can come up on a cam profile, although that's actually going to help our octane. Increase the bottom end quality. I'm gonna throw the forged in there just to see uh, if that does take care of that. I will leave them. If not, I will remove it. Up to 363, a little low. Getting there up now at 353. So we're getting there. Still having an RPM issue on the bottom end, so that did not do us any good. Um, that's that's okay. What we can do is come down and make a 6400. Since we're not making a lot of power up there anyway, I'm gonna put a performance intake on it because this is the Cobra R SVT Cobra R. So it's actually an outside tuner that worked on these motors to make them so high performance. I'm gonna guess they probably put a real high performance intake on there. Let's see what that nets us. Netted us a little bit of torque, 367. A little bit of horsepower, but not a lot. 356. Let's see if we get rid of that bottom end issue, though. Not quite. Well, let's. Unfortunate, I think we're probably just going to have to live with that, however, uh, because there's not really not really anything I can do besides increasing the bottom end quality, and even that, it's probably not going to take care of it. Uh, with a super long stroke setup, I think that's just going to be something that uh, it, it kind of proves how, how awesome these motors were, how high tech they were for the, two, the year 2000. Um, that even the simulation is like, whoa, 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 you, you can't do this. Uh, but they certainly did, and uh, they made it work. So let's see if we can increase that timing even more. We'll go pretty extreme here on that, 90. And uh, is there anything else we can maybe come up on that cam profile here? Let's see what we can do. Go one more down to a 47. 386, 383. That's that's great. I think I'm way pleased with that. The the RPMs are nearly correct. 386 and 383 is very close to 385. 
really this is probably one of the closest motors I've built. Uh, so uh, I think that's going to do it for uh, this motor. And that's going to be the Ford Modular V8 5.4. Uh, 4V, Oops, not dollar V, 4V. And then we can save this one separate from the other one. And uh, I think that is going to do it for this episode. So, as always, thanks for watching. Next time, we're going to work through some more modular V8s, two more, and uh, start to get into the current technology. Uh, probably one of the most famous motors going around right now is the current. Ford Modular V8 the Coyote and that is a pretty highly requested motor so look forward to that next time. So as I said thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.